In this video, I'll show how we can implement a command system for selected units on mobile devices by using Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting. Let's begin! Shall we play a game? In this tutorial, I'm going to be expanding on a system that I made in two previous tutorials, and if you haven't seen them yet, I would highly recommend returning to the start by clicking the card in the top right. If you're the type of person who likes a written set of instructions as opposed to a video format, then you might want to check out the online tutorial blog that I made for this build, and it can be found on my Patreon page. If while you're there you'd like to help support this channel, you can definitely do that, but if you're just interested in the blog, don't worry, it's free for everyone. So, let's go ahead and get to it. For this build, you're going to need to go ahead and make a couple of new flow macros. The touch count macro, which looks like this. Special note on this one, the touch count value input is a float, and it needs to be set to has default values so that we can adjust this outside of the graph. You're also going to need to go ahead and make the pixels to units macro. Now you'll notice that this one not only has no flow input, since we're only going to need the value information, the touch index value input is a float, and it also needs to be set to has default value. Today we're also going to be making use of the transform movement super unit that we've used multiple times in previous builds. For this build we're also going to need to go ahead and make a new scene variable, just call it point location and it is a vector 3 type. Today we're going to be adding on to the selection manager that I had you create in a previous build, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking the update that goes into this visualized selection input here of multiple touch, and we're just going to add a sequence here with three steps, and one is going to go right back where we had it, and uh, two more are going to be going right down here and right down here. And so let me just briefly explain what we're doing here. We're getting the direction value for each unit. And uh, we, we need to know where the point location was. So I had you create a new scene variable, call it point location, it's a vector three. And what we're doing is we're getting the touch count for the first touch on the screen. And the way that we're doing that, and not the second one, is um, to uh, make sure that our touch count is greater than uh, zero, but less than two, so one. And um, I had you go ahead and make this pixels to units. Mine's called uh, touch PTU, but uh, pixels to units is the same thing. Um, and what we're doing is we're getting the information of the first touch on that pixels to units there. And we're going to set the point location to that first touch. Um, then we're going to run it into the set directions for each unit. We need each unit to, to find the uh, direction for itself. And so the way that we do that is we um, go into this for each loop. And for each of the selected units, we're going to set the direction on uh, which way that it needs to travel. Uh, we're going to do that by getting our point location, just the X of that. If you wanted to use the Y, it would be pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, but we're checking to see if the point location of where we touched on the screen um, is uh, less than or equal to uh, the position of uh, the unit itself. So we're doing that for each item, and then we're going to be setting the direction that it needs to be traveling. If it is less than um, the location, so if our touch location uh, is less on the x-axis, then it's going to set the direction to a negative 1. If it's more on the x-axis, in other words, if it's a, a greater number on the x, then it's going to set the direction to a positive 1 so that it knows which direction it needs to travel. Um, then we had to put in the touch count. So what this is doing is whenever we double touch on the screen, whenever something is selected, then we're going to, for each selected unit in the list, we're going to set the commanded variable to true, and we're going to set the animator bool to walking. Now, I'm not really going to go into showing how to set up an animation um, in the animator for each unit, uh, but if you're interested, you can check out that online blog, and I did show how to do it in that. Let me just very briefly break down what this touch count flow macro is actually doing. So we're going to check and make sure that our screen is being touched, and if it is, then we're going to proceed to the next branch. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to get our touch count, which remember that can be edited outside of the graph. And if that is equal to the tap count, so that, uh, that touch count that we have, um, so whenever we double press on the screen, it's checking to make sure that number is the same. We're going to get the touch of the first object pressed on the screen uh, because it's the first one in the index and, and list start with zero. And we're checking to make sure that the phase or the state of that touch has ended. If all that is true, then it will return a double touch output. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add some new variables to our Hero Knight game object. We're going to need a boolean 
call it commanded and just leave it to unchecked. And then we're also going to need a float, call it direction, just leave it to a value of zero. That's the direction that's going to change. And then we're also going to need a float and call it speed and leave it at five. The last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add to our Hero Knight flow graph. And the way that we're going to uh, make some updates and changes is we're going to be adding these units. So uh, you can go ahead and add that on your screen. I'll try to talk you through it as we go. Um, in the last video, we had an update running into the selected super unit. What we're going to do is we're going to break the update here and then we're going to add a sequence and we're going to send one of the floats here and one right back into selected. Then what we're going to do is check and see if the commanded boolean on that game object is true. And we do that when we select it and we double touch, it sets that commanded boolean to true. So we're checking to see if it is true. If it is, then it's going to transform the movement um, by the speed and direction. So um, remember we set the direction, it checks where the point location was on the screen, it checks whether it's less or more, and then it sets the direction according to whether it's less or more. And we multiply the direction times the speed and it starts to move. We're also going to set the scale, just the X, not the Y and the Z. So we're keeping the local scale of that game object uh, the same and we're just running the direction into the x so if it's less than and it's moving left well we're going to uh, transform the scale to a negative if it's positive it'll be positive so it's going to go ahead and take care of that in the set scale um, unit here and then what we're going to need is we're going to need to check whether that game object is close to the location and so we do that by checking the point location where we touch on the screen versus its actual position and it's constantly updating this and checking on the X, and again, if you were gonna use the Y, it would look pretty much the same, but we're uh, just getting gonna do the X here, and uh, we're gonna check the X, and then we're checking the distance between the two. Is it less than or equal than a point three? The reason why we have a point three here instead of zero is just to make sure that there's no, not, there's nothing weird that happens in an update where it accidentally moves past zero and just keeps moving. So we're just throwing a little variance in there just to make sure that um, you know it has time to stop. And whenever it is in, whenever it's close to this location, so it's less than or equal to a point three, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the commanded bool off of itself and we're gonna turn the animator uh, of walking, the walking bull off as well. The last thing I wanna note about this is that I just duplicated the Hero Knight game object and moved it down to the list so that we could actually control one or multiple units. Okay, you should now be able to select and command units on your mobile games, which should give you a good platform to make some really cool RTS games. Hopefully this video has been helpful. I'm really excited to see what you guys make. For now though, my name is Megahertz and I'm out.